Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about an affordable media storage solution for your BMPCC 4K. Let's jump right into it. Now with your Blackmagic camera you basically have three different options for saving your footage. There is the SD card, the CFAS card or an external SSD. Now if you're one of those people who want it to be as small and as compact as possible you should not consider buying an SSD because as I already mentioned an SSD will have to be connected externally to your camera and for your SSD to fit properly you will need to buy an external SSD mount like like the cage from Smallrig for example which again of course costs a lot of money so most people will have to choose between SD cards or CFAS cards now, when it comes to the quality of these two different storage options, it is clear that CFAS cards are the better alternative, because the transfer speeds of CFAS cards are simply much higher than the transfer speeds of SD cards. However, a big con of CFAS cards is the price, which starts at $200 and up to $500. So the vast majority of young filmmakers who have just bought a new camera and you know can't wait to start shooting with it wouldn't want to spend so much money on a single memory card therefore we will only deal with SD cards in this video because they are an affordable alternative for most people out there many of you certainly have some SD cards you know lying around somewhere in your house and you might even be considering using them too but you shouldn't do that, for two reasons. First of all, the storage space will most likely not be enough. So if you want to film, let's say in 4K, then your SD card will fill up very quickly, probably within a few seconds. And the second reason is the insufficient reading or transfer speed of your SD card. Now, in general, you can distinguish between V30, V60 and V90 cards. V30 cards are really slow and I wouldn't recommend them for anything. V60 cards can work pretty well actually, but only if you're using a high compression rate, like B-RAW 12 to 1 or ProRes LT or ProRes Proxy. So the best solution is of course choosing a V90 card, because these cards are capable of reading your footage pretty fast and there are only few limitations. Now, the SD card that I'm currently using is a 256GB V60 card from Lexa. Because it is a good alternative if you want to get good value for your money. But how long can you actually record with it? I'm gonna show you the different recording times combined with different compression rates. Let's go. Now, are there any limitations to these cards? In fact, yes. If it is enough for you to shoot, let's say, in 24 or 30 frames per second, then you won't have any difficulties with this SD card, because it is fast enough to record your footage. 
But if you need to shoot in, let's say, 40, 50 or 60 frames per second, that means um, anything that goes beyond that will be difficult to shoot. But as I said, most young filmmakers who are starting out of their new cameras should actually be pleased and yeah, satisfied with this SD card and its capabilities. Hey, if you liked my video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel so you won't miss any of my upcoming content. See you next time.